Over the weekend, and uh, with a lot of those players out, we do want to talk about the quality of those games. And the first one was on Friday night as the Eels took on the Brisbane Broncos, and of course, TC, the baby Broncos. Yeah, one of the uh, second youngest sides in history. Look at that try there from Gay Guy over uh, Chris Walker there, showing little respect for uh, defence. And here he is, Gay Guy. And look, he had a fabulous match. Two tries. But it wasn't just the two tries from it, it was the way he took the high ball and the way he defended it as well. And he's a star of the future, this kid. And, uh, you know, the son of a former ex Bronco. So, uh, yeah, the line is very, very good there for him. And uh, the Eels wearing the blue and pink strip for Women in League Round. And, and Brett, you'd have to think, as an old Eel, this is a game that they would have thought they were a massive chance of winning. Oh, for sure. I, I think 90% of the punters would have, would have said that they'll win this game. You know, Brisbane had like, six or seven players out involved with Origin. Parramatta had two. Uh, it was played at Parramatta Stadium. That was a, that was a bad miss there. And there was a the game gone from that try. But, you know, full credit to Brisbane. When you look at what they've done over the last few years, you know, there was a couple of years ago, they didn't make the eight. But they had all these young kids playing. Now look where they're standing. So mm. they, they blooded the young kids. And I, I really think Parramatta should have looked at that and said, well, that's what we've got to start doing. You know, we've got some good young kids here. We've got to start blooding them and forget about making the finals for 12 months and let's just give these kids a chance and then two or three years we'll be starting to push the top four. Yeah, it's, um, it certainly is, is a problem there with the Parramatta. I mean, when you saw that try there with Gillette coming through, a thing I've always noticed is the outside defender was starting to back off as Gillette was coming and then couldn't actually come in and make the tackle and he got through and he shows some tremendous amount of pace but yeah the, you're right the, uh, the Broncos and, and Georgia they've always been like that they've always looked after their juniors but they've got a fantastic junior base guys you know a little bit different to Parramatta um, and they've got some of the best kids that can play you know for the state coming through their uh, recruitment system but yeah the, the, certainly the baby Broncos stood up there and I think coach Anthony Griffin's going to be very very proud of them and he gets his origin players back this week and I think they're really going to be a force to reckon with the Bronx. I want to say uh, congratulations to Pat O'Hanlon, youngster getting his first uh, game there for the Eels. And Nathan Homarsh, 57 tackles, 16 hit ups. Wasn't he blowing up at the end of that game, Tony? Well, he certainly did. I think at 12 points all, I really thought that Parramatta were going to come over the top of these boys and that at the back end of the game, they didn't have the experience to hold their nerve. And Parramatta had plenty of experience, as you said, with Nathan Homarsh. But it, they just didn't go, go with it. I just can't understand it. Well, TC, you mentioned him very briefly before in uh, the, the results for the Eels-Broncos game. And uh, we're going to bring you now our Indigenous Player of the Week. Well, he certainly is an excitement machine and he scores his first try here. And I thought Chris Walker should have really held him out to the sideline there, but he showed his power to get over in the corner. And he takes the intercept here and it's a 95 metre run and he certainly can run this kid and he's got a good style and it just seems like he's on the ever producing production line, the Broncos churn out, Yao Yi, Gay Guy, um, you know, Takiri, all these guys, they've come through and he's going to be one of the superstars, I think, for the Broncos in future. And when you think of the guys they could probably bring in from Q Cup, the likes of Liam Georgetown, who we saw play last night in the residence game, there's just a wealth of players. The thing I like about that kid, and, and people might not think much of it, but he was a right winger and he held the ball in his right hand. There's not too many NRL wingers do that especially right wingers, they always mm. hold the ball in their left hand and you teach kids at a young age when they're, when they're on the wing or they're running up the sideline, hold the ball in the outside arm so you've got an arm to fend with and, and that's exactly what he did. Hey Brett, I just want you to tell the viewers about recruitment and uh, how maybe the Parramatta Eels missed out on Darren Lockyer. On how many what? How they missed out on Darren Lockyer. Oh well yes, yes, uh, there was a story going around where Steve Eller who was doing some recruitment for, for Parramatta at the time and he noticed a young Darren Lockyer playing 5'8", and, and he recommended him to, to Parramatta. And um, his words were, look, Bert's not going to be around that long. This kid could take his place. And as they say, well, the rest is history. <laughs> it, um, it was just another one they missed. Mm, disappointment there for Parramatta. And uh, we're going to take a look at our uh, next game is the one between the Penrith Panthers and the Canterbury Bulldogs, which was out at Penrith Stadium. And uh, Luke Walsh just keeps getting better oh, and better, mate. But yeah. I'll tell you, unfortunately, a night for young Benny Barber to forget. Yeah, just a rule of thumb, Benny. Ball in the air, ball must be caught on the full by the fullback. But uh, Lukey Walsh puts it up here, and Benny just couldn't get to it quick enough. And just presence of mind to give it out to Pertell to score that try was fantastic. He's been on fire, Walsh. Here's another kick over here that doesn't get diffused. And Burns comes through and... Uh, was a nice try. And we were saying he is the new 
Steve Carter, maybe. Steve Carter for Penrith. Uh, Carter played a lot of uh, games for Penrith in their heyday in a couple of grand finals there. So, uh, look, very disappointing from the Bulldogs, guys. I, I thought they'd come out here and really give it to uh, the Panthers. But there's another one there. And, uh, Bert, I always call them in Georgia the controllables. When a controllable is a, if the ball's in the air and you catch it, you control it. If you let it bounce, it becomes an uncontrollable and it goes anywhere. Yeah, well, I think with a few of them, um, a couple of other guys sort of ran in on it and made it a bit harder for Benny. But, you know, Benny's just got to step up and take control of that. But, you know, he's the only guy who was looking really dangerous for him with the ball. They just really should have stepped up in that game. And uh, Penrith were too strong. I thought Travis Burns was great too, as well as Walsh. I think you just put that down as an off night, don't you? He has been their gun all year, Yeah, Benny Barber. And keep your chin up, brother. You'll be bouncing back this week. Uh, also, uh, the Peach, in his fantastic segment, got out this time to check out the Bulldogs Army. It's a fine Sunday, Sunday afternoon, perfect for rugby league. Here I am, the Peachy segment at ANZ Stadium. We've got the Doggies Army. We've got to go and have a yarn to Anthony and see what they're all about. They're loud, they're proud, they're very vocal, and this is one I'm really looking forward to. Everywhere Let's go. We go. Everywhere we go, people want to know. People want to know who we are, who we are, where we come from, where we come from. Anthony. Do you have a Facebook or a website where people can actually get on and, and see how many supporters you have and where you're travelling? Yeah, mate. Um, the, we've got the Facebook, we've got Twitter, Bulldogs Army, and we've also got a Bulldogs Army website, so bulldogsarmy.com. We've got about 4,600 members on Facebook, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, for about 400, 500 people that come to the games every week at ANZ, yep. and um, lots, lots more at away games. And do it's not just turn up at game day. Do you do things outside of the, the football games? No, we've got touch footy. We do uh, touch footy all the time. We have a barbecue last week. Um, we do lots and lots of different things outside because we really are a family. Something unique within the, the Doggies family as well is that the number 18. What's so special about number 18? Mate, um, you know, every, every home game the Bulldogs, you know, appoint a person who they believe has gone above and beyond. And uh, we have about five of those members, three in the crowd here right now. And, uh, you know, it's a really special tribute from the club to recognise as, you know, the 18th fan. <laughs> Well, here I am with Musty. How long have you been supporting the Doggies, mate? 20 years. Yeah, and over those 20 years, who's, who's been your favourite player? Hazem Elmaz. Ah, oh, Hazem. Yeah. Well, I'm actually doing a little bit of work with Haz with NRL's One Community. Yep. He can't kick. He's not a very good kicker. <laughs> <laughs> mate, he's one of the best, isn't he? Oh, yeah, one of the best. He yeah, is the yeah, best. He's the best, yeah. no doubt. Yep, and today's current crop, who's, who's your favourite player now? Benny Barber. Benny Barber. Yeah. Benny. Yeah. And I think he's got a song about Benny Barber. Give him a ball, Takes a lot of commitment, a lot of voice, and you're at the front of the Doggies Army chanting those songs. Yep, absolutely every week. Yeah. yeah. You got a favourite one? Me, I love the Benny Barber song. It's one of my favourites. We've had many songs over the years, but that one has to take the cake. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing the doggy army behind you know that that song's coming once he scores, because Ab he's been scoring a few. Absolutely. When he does score the try, I turn back and I look at him. I'm like, All right, guys, get ready. Light up. Let's get this song going. <laughs> Well, there it is, mate. I've got my scarf. I'm off the Bay 133 with the Doggies Army. Mate, they've been loud and proud. They're going to start marching. They're off. The Doggies are nice and loud. There they go. The Doggies Army, the family that gets them by week in, week out. Very, very good. Peach, over and out. Over and out. Roger that. Peach, uh, out there at the Dogs Army. Mate, haven't they really worked hard on their reputation over the last few years? The, the Bulldogs fans? And the Bulldog Army. Have done yeah, they certainly job. have. And it's a little bit uh, disappointing in the papers. You know, there's a little bit of uh, accusations that the, uh, the board at the Bulldogs are um, uh, wanting to move uh, Kevin Moore on. And uh, look, I can tell you, I've made a couple of calls. It's furthest from the truth. I mean, and for the, for the papers to name Bulldog, uh, the, the Bulldogs board members' names, no other club gets that. So I, I don't know whether it's a conspiracy to try and jam the Bulldogs, but they certainly cleaned up their act over the last four or five years. And uh, they're one of the leading clubs out there in the community. Absolutely, mate. We're going to take a look now at the Cronulla Sharks, who had won two on the trot as they came up against the South Sydney Rabbitohs, who also had two wins on the trot. Would be a case of which team would turn up on the day. Certainly wasn't the ones in red and green, Tone. Oh, mate, I get sick of saying, you know, we just didn't turn up on the day. Brett, I, you know, it's like a golfer. If a golfer's got a really weak technique, he's going to be all over the joint. 
And I think it's around about the, you know, their match uh, play and their structure that with the Rabbitohs. If it's nice and strong, you can go out and get a consistent game every week. But you know, they went from the penthouse to the basement in one week, and uh, after defeating the. The Broncos over in, in Perth, and you can't say the travel hurt them because the Broncos kicked back against Parramatta. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's an unusual situation. You, you look at South, you look at what they've got on paper, and you would say they're a definite eight, top eight team, you know, but you watch them week in, week out. I mean, it must be hard for the punters. So they've got to look at it and say, well, geez, they had a good win last week, but the, the odds are they're not going to perform this week. They can't mm. seem to back it up two weeks in a row. And, and uh, I know. Greg Inglis wasn't there and Dave Taylor wasn't playing, but geez, you know, they're, they're playing a, a very young shark side and a side that you wouldn't expect to, to beat a team like South Sydney, even mm. with those two players out. But I don't know what it is, but they just can't seem to back it up week in, week out. And to be competitive, that's what you've got to do at this level. And George, no, um, as Brett mentioned, no Dave Taylor, Greg Inglis, and they've been really the, the instigators of a lot of South's attack. Yeah, that's their side, their go-to side every time, and that's one causing most damage to sides. And um, I just hope they don't find their form yet. Maybe hold off another week, you know, <laughs> another bad week this week. <laughs> find some form next week. But there was a great crowd out there at Canola on the weekend. 18,000 people turned up for them, so I think that would have helped them a lot. And I think Jeremy Smith's another great one. Um, probably the best buy for them that they've had for a while because he's brought some mongrel back to the side. You've got to give uh, Shane Flanagan a wrap. I think he's, he's done a great job with him. And, uh, I know Flano, he was, he was coaching at, at Parramatta, coached the reserve grade side a number of years ago and, and obviously that was his goal to be the first grade coach in the NRL and he's been able to achieve that and, and I think the performances of the Cronulla Sharks is, goes a lot to, to way, the way he coaches the team and they seem to be a very exciting rugby league side, like to throw the ball around. Mm. And we're lucky to have him on next week uh, to talk about the Cronulla Sharks, but what I like, lo have liked about him is he's changed it. They put a bit of variation in the, uh, the Sharks' game plan, and for the first time, I think, in three, three consecutive games, they've topped 20 points for a long, long time. And it's just little subtle differences. They're just changing mm. from where they were at the beginning of the year, and they're just asking a few more questions. And I, and I think what he's doing, too, is he's, he's letting these young guys use their natural ability. He's not trying to stop anyone from doing anything. They're going out and they're playing football and they're enjoying what they're mm, doing. Mm. I think a lot of sides could learn from them. And uh, just, uh, I know there was a South fan who really didn't enjoy that one. I want to say a big hello out to Lee Smallwood up there, uh, up in North Queensland. I uh, had a chat with her partner, Jace, last night at the footy. Good fella too, and hello up to you up there, Lee. Uh, good luck to the Bunnies this week against Georgie's Manly. I'm sure they'll get up. Uh, also, another hello to the... In, I guess the unofficial mayor of Greystones is now living up in uh, Queensland, Ray Arrow, who uh, also looked after myself and my brother Clint last night at the footy. Good on you, Ray. Uh, we're going to take a look now at the Dragons up against the Knights. And uh, this was another one, if you look at opportunity where players are out for State of Origin TC, the Dragons were right for the picking. They were right for the picking, and uh, this was actually the diamond uh, of the games this week. It was, uh, I thought that the, uh, the Dragons would win this, but these, yeah, the Newcastle Knights came down to win stadium. This young fella got knocked out previously and really didn't realise he uh, had scored. And in fact, they showed him on the, uh, the replay saying, how'd we go? Did we score? And he, in fact, scored the try. He was on the sideline, didn't even have any idea that he had scored. So... You know, nice work there, and this Stig has come, has come of age, you know, and uh, the halves in Roberts and Stig are just going to prove a little bit of a selection headache for Rick Stone when uh, Mullen comes back, and I don't know which way he'll go. I think you've got to go with momentum and form. Well, are they playing for their current coach, or are they playing for next year's coach? Is it the <laughs> contracts well, are up for... Well, that's what I was thinking. Geez, it's, it's amazing. They're playing against a side who's coached by their future coach, and, <laughs> and uh, they all put in some great performances. And you look at these guys, like guys like Reece Simmons getting a chance out of the mines here, Georgie, to play and score a couple of tries. It's great to see. Yeah, look, that's awesome, you know. I remember watching him years back and, and for him to just jump in and be able to score two tries in an NRL game coming from nowhere is, is great. Don't forget we've got another guy called Matt Rogers about to put the boots on for the Titans at 35, 36 years of age and he's been out for a while too. You're going to have a go, TC? You're going to put the well, boots on? Well, I rang Choppy close again. up and said, Choppy, we'll both go in the centres outside Matty Rogers. We'd go, OK? There's a difference between 35 and 65, Uncle. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty good for 65, I reckon. Give yourself a wrap. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see the game between the Roosters and the Raiders. And if uh, there's some disappointed fans out there, Maybe some confused fans. It'd have to be the Roosters fans. Oh, certainly, mate. Uh, uh, they've really hit rock bottom there. And, uh, you know, listen to Gordy Tallis saying that he uh, thinks that Matty Elliott should take immediate charge and Brian Smith go out. But uh, in the papers today, 
Uh, the CEO has come out in support of Brian Smith, and uh, as we know, Bert, that's the death knell, I think. You'll probably be gone in the inside a month. <laughs> uh, we're only joking, but seriously, what the, uh, the Raiders have been doing over the last couple of weeks has just been more direct, mate. They, all they've done is run straight, run hard, and uh, if you're going to back off in defence, which a lot of teams do out wide, then they're going to score tries. There was a glimmer of hope in this game when uh, Carney scored a try, and he had showed glimpses of good form. But in the end, guys, they had enough talent on the field to be... Uh, to win this game, the Roosters, uh, but the Canberra Raiders came up and uh, they came up with some fantastic plays. Here you go, going straight and going forward, running into gaps, and sooner or later you find your way over the try line, George. Yeah, they were just too good in the end, Canberra. You know, that was a lovely try before from Blake Ferguson, who I think is still in great form, and uh, he would have been great for the Blues, one of them um, attacking players that can really make a difference in a game. Well, there is a record that the Roosters may be able to achieve, and that is that they could be the first side in rugby league history to go from last place, grand finals, to last place. <laughs> My God, it's like the Dow Jones. Three years. Up and down. That's pretty tough, isn't yeah, it? It's it is, an amazing mate. effort. And just, and it, there's obviously something wrong there, because you can't imagine a side that was last year's grand finalist mm. could quite possibly get the wooden spoon. And even if they don't get the wooden spoon, they've had an absolute disgrace for a year. And in the press conference, Brian Smith came out and said, we've had a mountain of injuries, and that's fine, but they had nine players from the grand final last year in this game. So they had a nucleus there to do something yeah, pretty good. They've been one of, I guess, a lot of teams have been affected by injury, but when you've got the likes of Carney and uh, Anasta still in your side, You've got, to, you've got to think you're a chance of scoring well, you think points. There's enough they points can't score there. points. They can't score points. So there's something going on there. It's confidence, and confidence does play a big part. But, geez, uh, I'm glad I'm out of the coaching game because I don't know where to fix their problems or where to start. <laughs> uh, well done to Mark Kerala getting his first start there for the Roosters. And I forgot to mention Luke Burgess, uh, the uh, older brother of uh, Sam and George Burgess at the, the Bunnies, getting his first game this week too. Flew him over TC, straight into it. No mucking around there at the, the Bunnies. We're going to look at the ladder now and see how the teams are going after 17 rounds of the competition. It is the Melbourne Storm who are on top of the competition with a pretty decent points differential there of 153. And uh, all the way down there you see the Panthers and the Tigers are on 18 points with a couple of other teams too battling it out for the top eight with the Warriors and the Bulldogs. Uh, the Sharks getting that win gets them up in front of the Rabbitohs on four and against as well. And uh, the Titans and Roosters battling it out for the bottom of the competition and that's not one place you'd like to be. Uh, also now, uh, the, no uh, guys going before the judiciary in those five games this week, so no bad boys for round 17. So TC, a few coaches can rest easy there, all their players they can are rest back. easy, mate. Have we got time to just have a little bit about the Titans and whether it's a good idea to get, bring Matty Rogers back? What do you think, Bert? I don't really think it is. I, no, look, no, no, to be honest, uh, Matty Rogers was a great player. And I'd say was a great player. He won't be as good as he was before. I mean, that's like he's, he's older now, you know. And um, I really can't understand why they're bringing him back. When you look at it, they, they're at the bottom of the competition. They're not going to make the eight. Here's an opportunity to blood some young kids. Um, you know, surely they've got some, some guys up there. Is it Ipswich? Is the yeah, feeder Ipswich club? Yeah, Ipswich is the feeder club. Um, and I think, Burley. Burley. is it Capewell they bought from yep. South? Yeah, they play for the residents. Why not put him in? Why not give him a chance and, and give them some games in the NRL? I mean, mm. as I said, they're, they're not going to make the finals. They're, their season's over as far as that's concerned. So take the opportunity to blood these kids. Otherwise, they'll find they'll start losing them. They'll go to other clubs and then when the older guys, it's time to retire, they'll have no one there to replace them. Another option I would like for the Titans is maybe to play Prince out at six and put Brad Davis in there at seven. He plays for Tweed. Um, Leading point scorer, isn't he? But, but again, Cup? he's a bit old in the tooth, and he's been around for a long, long time. And you know, he, he has played well in the Q Cup for many, many years. They're just looking for some young guys. The interesting thing is, it, George, what about if he comes back and stars at Matty Rogers? What's that got to say about busting your butt, play, all training off season, doing all this technical work, and this guy just dons on a pair of boots and comes out and stars at five eight? Could be embarrassing for the NRL if he does that. Well, I'd quite like it, because then if they scrap the pre-season training, that's right <laughs> up my alley. I love that. We'll just turn up, play footy. I'm happy with that. I think I'm pretty tired now too, George, so we'll take a break here on the Barefoot Rugby League Show. Stay put. Next on Barefoot, we preview the New South Wales and Intrust Super Cup competitions and a tribute day for a very special player. Don't go anywhere.
Makeup on. <laughs> Thank you. All right, cool. So, how are you going, mate? Good. Well, thanks. So, listen, what are we going to talk about when you come on? Um, what do you want to? What do you want to tell everyone? I couldn't believe he was still playing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, went, I went and watched a couple, a couple of the games there up at Narawena and that. What was he playing in the A grade? Yeah, yeah. He was coaching, oh, and he yep. yep, started yeah, playing. And yeah. <laughs> but he said he, said he had his Probably last game, he, he took a couple you know, of hits and said, no, that's it, I'm not, yep. I'm not playing. <laughs> First time he'd been hit in 30 years or something. So, and, and uh, just normal men's, women's, kids' competitions? Yeah. Any changes from previous years? Uh, only thing is, there was an issue last year, really, with more than 64 teams. If there's more than 64, we're gonna we're gonna do something on the Friday. We're gonna play off on the Friday to end the main draw. Well, yeah, well, it's a serious thing we've got to worry about, isn't it? Because when remember teams dropped out after they worked out, you know, oh, it was really unfair for some of those guys. Yeah, mate. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Do we change the bread back? How much time we got? And we got about five minutes for that segment, is it? Okay. Sorry, Brett, not Brad. What are you? What are you doing? I'm gonna take this one back off here and put one back on. Welcome back to the Barefoot Rugby League Show and uh, the New South Wales Cup and Intra Super Cup games weren't played over the weekend because of the Resonance game which was played last night as the curtain raiser to uh, State of Origin 3 and TC it was a win to the Queenslanders, 32 points to 6. Yeah mate, just showed the quality there of the, uh, the State League, the Q Cup, the Intra Super Cup there. Um, it was a good game, uh, unfortunately for the Blues, uh, Queensland too good, 16-0 half-time score and went on to win 32 to 6 and some good performances there. Luke Cape will... Uh, Two tries from fullback mm -hmm. and had a magnificent game. Very good. Uh, we're going to show you the upcoming games for New South Wales Cup now. So make sure you get out on the weekend. And uh, we're going to show you the ladder as well where the teams are standing as they go into this week's games. It's the Bulldogs who are on top, just ahead of the Vulcans and the Sharks. And uh, Newtown Jets and what Phil Magpies up there in the top five. But they do run a top eight here and uh, all the way down to Centurions at 17 points. Wentworthville take on at Manly this week. Uh, that one being played out at Leichhardt Oval. And uh, also you see uh, Newtown Jets having the bye this week. So get out and watch those games. Canterbury Bankstown and Central Coast are uh, the Fox 2 game. You can get that on Wednesday afternoon. So uh, there are the games this week. And uh, TC, uh, we might have a look now at the ladder of the Intrust Super Cup.
Yes, uh, obviously nothing moved from last week, and we've got Tweed Head Seagulls unbeaten there. 13 wins and a draw on 27 points. And it's really getting tight there for the battle for number six position. You see the Burley Bears are on 15 with the Mackay Cutters and Winner Manly and the Central Comets all fighting out to try and get that sixth position and be there uh, on finals and leading into the, uh, the grand final in September. And the poor old Sunny Coast Eagles, they got their first win last week. But they got a big one against uh, this weekend, mate. They're playing the Redcliffe with Dolphins up there on their home ground. So <laughs> it's got to be a tough one for them. But have a look at the uh, Round 15 upcoming games. Northern Pride versus Burley Bears up at Barlow Park there. And uh, Cairns, Sunshine Coast, Redcliffe Dolphins, as I said earlier. And East Tigers versus South Slogan. That'll be a good game. Central Comets versus Tweed at Brown Park there. And uh, Rocky. And uh, Mackay Cutters, Ipswich Jets, Winner Manly versus the North Devils, who aren't travelling too good, the old North Devils. Be a beautiful Friday night up there with Northern Pride. Uh, nice oh mate, Friday, it's fantastic think. Northern Pride and I must say they do some great work for Indigenous Rugby League with limited amount of budget up there. Chris Shepard, and we talked to him last night, managed to bring down those people from Bamiga mm. and uh, they, in fact, we'll talk about it early, but they have a game, a Q Cup, an Intra Super Cup game in Bamiga. Can you believe that? That's a first. Alright, we'll talk more about that in a future weeks. Well, on Sunday was a very special day for my community of La Perouse as they remembered my cousin who uh, passed away last year. I want to thank you. He's a brother-in-law, Kyle Parker, who organised for me to go out there and uh, work on uh, this story for the Barefoot Rugby League Show. It is a day of mixed emotions here in the La Perouse community at Yarra Oval on the site where last year Christopher Lyons, affectionately known as Epair, lost his life playing the game that he loves. Today, the Lyons family and also the Aboriginal community and the La Perouse Football Club remember him in what is going to be a very emotional day. My role here is a digital custodian. I'm one of the part of the traditional, traditional owners. You're a nation, but we are digital people first and foremost. And to have this today brought into reality, one man's dream along with another lady, Yvonne Sims, and in conjunction with the Library's Botany Bay Aboriginal Corporation, the digital custodians, and it's great to see a football club behind you. Today is very emotional, not only for, for the family that, that, uh, that this has affected, but also for the club in general. Um, there's been a lot of talk about it throughout the week, a lot of preparation, a lot of organisations that, that took place behind the scenes for this day to unfold and, and it's just been a great day. Today to have a young man honoured who was cut down in the prime of his life, his life cut short and today his family can carry on the tradition and in memory of him being here. So today we have with great pleasure all members of the Lions family and their relatives and friends at the unveiling of this plaque which, is, which will be a perpetual